Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Hogan's Alley. In this segment, we're going to concern ourselves with the grip. We're going to talk about the left hand grip, the right hand grip, the union of the hands in the grip. We're going to talk about what Hogan specifically told John to do with his grip and some of the aspects that are really important that a lot of people tend to overlook that uh, with the union of the hands that we need for better shot making. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to look at uh, Lucas Glover's swing. We're going to look at Kenny Perry's swing. And um, with those, uh, we're going to understand some of what they do with their lower body that may help you understand the lower body a little better. Uh, Lucas Glover is a perfect example of the chain action that Hogan uses in describing the swing from the ground up. But um, first of all, let's, uh, let's go and talk a little bit about the grip and about the important parts of the grip. So we're gonna defer back to John Schley's book, Maximum Golf, where Hogan taught John very intricate uh, aspects about the grip. So let's take a look at that. John always liked to describe the grip as mainly a finger grip, that the butt of the club and that part of the grip always is more in the fingers than it is in the palm of the hand. Um, what he liked to point out is some of the basic checkpoints of the left hand grip. Here in uh, Maximum Golf on page 32 it says the back of the left hand and the face of the club are parallel. That means that the back of the left hand as it is on the grip the back of the left hand will be in line with the leading edge of the club and we'll get more into that. The V formed by the thumb and index finger of the left hand is pointing at the left shoulder. Traditionally they had it pointing at the right shoulder or even at the chin but uh, with the proper left hand grip the thumb and index finger of the left hand should point toward your left shoulder. Also one of the most important aspects of the left hand grip is that the left wrist is bowed out. And as you can see in this picture right here, the left wrist is slightly bowed out from the left hand. And I'll show you that as well. We'll get more into that. But those are very, very important parts in starting to assume the left hand grip. When assuming the left hand grip, what you want to look down and you want to see is that the back of the left hand and, as you can see on my practice club here, the leading edge of the club are in line. Back of the hand and the leading edge, they are in line. Also what you'll see is that the knuckles on the left hand are in line with the club shaft as well. What we want to do is we want to make sure that when we put the left hand on the club, we pull back with the thumb to give it more stability. By giving it more stability when you're at the top of the, your swing, you have more control of the club. As you can see, we are creating the left hand and the left wrist in a slightly bowed position and when we put the right hand over the left we have the two middle fingers of the right hand barely touching the thumb of the left hand we then have the right hand and the lifeline of the right hand fitting right over snug with the thumb of the left hand. Then we have the V formed by the thumb and index finger will be pointing toward the left shoulder as well. 
this right here is what you want to see when you're looking down at your hands. This is a very secure grip without being too tight. One thing we must remember is that with the left hand grip, we have to have maximum stability. And here on page 34, uh, John talks about the grip and the left hand maximum uh, stability. As you grip the club perpendicular to the left arm without the thumb on the shaft, in this picture up here, move the club up and down and you will notice slack or play. You know, you move it back and forth. And what you'll notice is that, that there will be uh, that ability to um, have the club move back and forth. But now put the thumb slightly on the right side of the shaft, pulling the thumb back. Remember, we do not want to have a long thumb. We do not want to have that feeling the, of instability. By pulling the thumb back slightly on the club, we will develop that feeling of stability. Now, and you'll notice that the slack and play has been removed. Now remember what John was saying was Ben taught him to look at the left side as the stabilizing side. That is the left side in the grip, the left side in the arm, the left side of the body is the stabilizing side. And in this, in the grip, there is no cup in the back of the left wrist. The bowed out left wrist allows maximum cupping or leverage in the right wrist because it's real important to have that cup in the back of the right wrist. If you have that cup in the back of the right wrist, you will be able to retain that maximum power as you're going through the hitting area. You'll be able to retain uh, what centrifugal force is trying to let go through your body, arms, and hands. And the more you can retain, the more you hold back, the, at the moment of impact, there's more of a pure uh, ability to, to allow that energy to flow through your hands. And when that happens, you will get maximum energy, maximum distance out of your shots. Now remember, the important aspects of the left hand grip are that the back of the left hand and the left wrist are in line and become slightly bowed at the finish of a dress. But remember, the back of the left hand, it's very important that you have the feeling that the back of the left hand is to the ground. And why is it important to have that feeling that the back of the left hand is to the ground? Is because the left hand is a guide. We don't want to feel like the left hand's the power hand. We have the power in the right side for the right-handed player. All the power is in the right hand. It's retained when you have a cup in the back of the right wrist and then as it's going through the hitting area centrifugal force takes over and releases the power in the right hand but the left hand guides it properly through the hitting area so in order for you to have a proper working grip where one hand is the power hand and one hands the guide you need to make sure that by giving the left hand the guide it's supposed to be, it will not fight the right hand. Now, if you're setting up with a cup in the back of the left wrist as such, and trying to get a cup in the back of the right wrist, the left wrist is going to fight it through the hitting area. A lot of times people will, will then fire the hands, creating more of a handy type swing and eliminating that energy that's flowing through the arms to the hands and down into the club. That's why we have to eliminate the cup in the left wrist by keeping the grip in the fingers, making sure that we have a slight bow, back of the left hand and the leading edge of the club face will be in line. The right hand, after you pull back on the thumb, the lifeline of the right hand will fit directly over the thumb, creating what the thumb and index finger, the V formed by the thumb and index finger, will go up 
toward the left shoulder. So in essence, you're going to have the thumb and index finger V of the left hand going up to the left shoulder and the thumb and index finger of the right hand as well. This is the proper setting of the hands on the club. Remember, we're setting the hands on the club. We're not gripping the club really tight. We're getting a position where we're going to use the left hand as a guide and have the availability for the right hand to have the power, retain the power in the swing all the way up until impact. Today on the practice tee, we are going to see the influence that the grip has in our practice sessions. Remember, what we want to do is we want to make sure we have a secure grip. We also want to make sure that the grip is set on the club perfectly. Remember the back of the left hand, the leading edge of the club face. We're going to have a bow in the back of the left wrist. The thumb and index finger of the left hand points to the left shoulder. Thumb and index finger of the right hand points to the left shoulder as well. This gives us an opportunity so that when we are going through our swing, that the left side gets completely out of the way and the right side power can come through unencumbered. What I mean by unencumbered, remember, if we neutralize the left side, if we get the left side out of the way, then the right side has the ability to come through without being uh, without the left side being in the way. <clears throat> so, what we do when we are on the practice tee is we practice that feeling of the hands. We make sure that the grip is on perfect. We do it with short swings. We do it with short motions. And what I'm going to show you today is one of the, um, <clears throat> one of the best, I think, uh, feelings uh, to hit the short little shots with and that is with the thumb and the index finger off the club. The thumb and index finger of the right hand. Remember Hogan talked about that? John talked about that? What that does is it gives you the opportunity to feel what the big muscles are doing and not the pinchers. Remember, we don't want the pinchers to inhibit our swing. So right now, what I'm going to do is I want to show you. You get your grip perfect, then you'll take the thumb and index finger off the club and just hit shots that way. It's a it's a, a superb feeling of showing how the hands are unified but the thumb and index finger don't get involved in the shot. Okay. So we've got the the hands on the club perfect. Arms sit inward. Feel the back nice and straight. Remember, when you're going through your practice session, you want to make sure that you're actually going over some of the setup that needs to happen. From this position right here, we will take the thumb and index finger off the club and hit some shots this way. get the feeling that the body is doing everything. The body is rotating. Everything about the body is rotating. The hands are just the connection. Remember, the hands do not hit the ball. The hands are just the connection that we have going through the hitting area. Let's try that one again. I get my grip on perfect. Get set up. That's how I want it to be. Remember, we want the grip to be nice and loose. We don't want it to have a real tight death grip on it. And another thing I like to tell people to do is to get the arms set inward. Now, if you put emphasis on the forearms getting together, it takes the that that tension, that feeling of the hands away. It's almost impossible to try and get the forearms together with your forearms and grip the club at the same time, real, real tight. So, put more of the emphasis, more of the emphasis on the forearms being together. Take the 
take the thumb and index finger off and go. Now remember, <clears throat> it's very important to get a secure grip. It's very important to make sure it's not too tight. And it's very important to make sure it's on there perfect. All right? So what I want to do right now is I want to show you a couple of things that, um, that the guys on tour are doing. And one of them is if you saw Lucas Glover in the U.S. Open, what you saw was somebody coming down the stretch that, uh, that had never been there before in that particular situation, yet was able to um, finish and win the tournament. And what I believe he did that was, that was exceptional is he uses his lower body, just like Hogan talked about, that chain action, whereby when you get to the top of the swing, the lower body starts first. You can actually see the separation in his swing. You can see the lower body start independently uh, as compared to, say, somebody like uh, David Toms, who gets to the top of the swing and everything goes together. He gets to the top and his whole body starts down. Whereas Lucas Glover gets to the top of his swing, you can actually see him turn the lower body first, okay? And it's that chain action. When you use big muscles like that, you have a tendency to, um, not, to get, not to get too handsy in the swing. And if people are using their smaller muscles, which are in their hands and arms first, they're gonna go a little bit more wayward than say somebody who's using chain action and big muscles first, okay? Another uh, person who does that very well is Kenny Perry. But Kenny, on the other hand, takes his shoulder motion back to about here, lifts the club up, then turns his hips back, then turns his hips through, and goes. So he has more of a one, two, three, he has more of a four-part swing. Okay, like I said, he turns his shoulders back, lifts it up, turns his hips back, and turns it through, and then finishes. And uh, sometimes he can get in trouble because he'll start a little bit. Once he gets to the top of the swing, if he gets a little nervous, the lifting action will actually make him go over the ball. It'll, it'll, it'll tend to give him that feeling that he... Um, is coming over the top slightly, okay? Now getting into that, I wanna point out about the shoulder turn. Remember I had that, that lesson, you can check your shoulder motion right here. You can check your plane with this, with this drill. But what I want you to see is that it also helps you with your shoulder turn. Remember, we want the shoulders to turn around, not up, they turn around. So make sure that you're getting into the habit of turning your shoulders around, around your body, making sure that that right shoulder turns back and doesn't turn up. Back. Remember, it's more of a action going back. That will help you stay consistent. So. I will see you next time. That's it for this edition of Hogan's Alley. And uh, we will get into more of the tour swings and we'll get into more of what Hogan and John say is best for our golf swing. Not just to, to try and make it perfect, but best. What is the best? Remember, we always want to try and do the best. We don't want to just settle for something. Okay, so let's try and learn to do the best, and I'll see you next time.